Hello YouTube, today's video is a follow-up to the one I made about individuality almost a year ago. And in that video I explained to you why it was crucial for you to develop a strong individuality and why you had to actually make sure to actually hang on to that very creation because if you wanted to be a balanced, efficient and happy person, it was the key, it was the first step. And today I'm coming at you with a second key because it's not enough to just develop your individuality. You also have to know how to defend it. And there are a lot of people who don't know how to do that. Meaning that because they've never been given the tools and the weapons to protect their self, it just goes away and mitigates at the first confrontation or the first time it gets tested. And when that is the case, you quickly come to realize that your individuality is really up for grabs. Anyone who is talented or gifted enough in terms of aggression or manipulation will take it away. And since it's your most valued possession, you cannot let that happen. So today, I'm going to offer you a key to make sure that you can actually lock that individuality in place, and that key is called identity. So how do we develop the identity? Well, first off, you have to understand one thing. The identity is going to be a mechanism put in place to protect your individuality. Individuality that is so necessary for people who work alone. Because if you're going to want to live for a very long time, or if you have any type of passion or hobby or craft that you want to get really good at, this is going to take a lot of time alone. And time alone with no identity or individuality can be hell. Many people can be tortured just by virtue of them not being around others. The issue is that this is not normal. It is true that we are social beings and social creatures, but a large portion of our lives is also going to be spent by ourselves because that's when we are at our most productive because we are recentered on the self. If the idea of having to recenter on the self scares you or is painful to you, most likely, most likely it's because your self is void and empty. Therefore, when someone tells you you have to recenter, the only thing you have to recenter towards is darkness. It's that gap within your heart that terrifies you. And I want to make sure that you can fill that gap because it is, again, a key to leading a happy life. So, if your individuality is who you are and, and your person, your, your entity, your entity as a free being, identity is going to be the safekeeper of that identity. It's going to be what is going to maintain you as an individual because your individuality defines you as the individual, but it's not enough to protect that status because it's constantly under attack. And I'm sure that you've noticed that. There are many people whose goal in life is to steal your individuality. Why? Because if they can take that away from you, they can use you like, like a puppet in a sense, because you're going to be removed from your goals. When you are a strong individual and you have put individuality at the center of your life, you're going to be driven, you're going to have things you want to do, you're going to have principles, values. All of that makes you a very good person to be around for a certain type of people. But for those that wish to actually use you, it's the exact opposite, because now you're not malleable. It's not easy to move you around. You are too cumbersome. And so, before they actually get to use you for their plans or whatever they wish to do with you, they're going to first and foremost break down your individuality. And as I said, many people do not have the necessary defenses to protect themselves from this wood. Because it's not just people. It's the wood in general. The wood exists to break your individuality down. And it's a test in a sense. Because only the strongest individualities can survive. So, it also means that for a lot of people, they are just going to be filtered. Natural selection is going to filter them because they were not able to preserve their self. I want to make sure it doesn't happen to you your independence, your agency, all of these things that again come and bloom from your individuality need protection, but the only person that can protect them is you. So I'm going to give you methods, I'm going to give you the key again, but it's going to be up to you to use it for its purpose, for its intended purpose. Now, if I were to relate that to lifting, because it's something that I try to do when I make that type of video that are centered around self-improvement, why would having a strong individuality and identity be useful for lifting? Well, it's simple. Lifting is part of the wood. We are not exempt or we are not removed from the wood. So all of the bad things and all of the bad people that are going to want to break down your individuality to own you 
also exist in this sphere. We can name scamares, we can name bad influencers, role models who are going to try and again infiltrate you, remove whatever makes you you, and inject what makes them them. Because if they can make you after their image, you become their thing. Tu, tu deviens leur chose. They can now use you for whatever they want. They can take your money, they can take your resources, your energy, they can redirect your attention wherever they want. All of these are things that companies and people who represent these companies have been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years. One look around yourself and you will see dozens, hundreds of people who are puppets, who are just slaves to consumerism, slaves to companies, slaves to the media, who never think for themselves. And all of that is because they have a very weak sense of individuality. Their individuality has been replaced by something else. Usually it's mass manipulation. It's going to be a certain identity that was crafted by someone who knew that if they injected that identity, they, they would become, they would be then able to manipulate them. Keep in mind one thing. Everyone craves an identity because everyone craves individuality. But for those of us who never managed to make one of our own, it becomes very tempting to receive one from someone else. And this is when the trap closes on you. If you take an identity from someone else, most likely they are going to use it to their advantage. It's not really your identity, it's a Trojan horse. It's the reason why in this video, I'm not going to teach you how to be a certain way. I'm just going to teach you how to be. Whatever you do with that, whatever you want to be with it, it's up to you. But what I'm doing here is I'm regaining, uh, I'm retaking your agency for you and I'm giving it back to you. Free of charge, I don't expect you to hold any level of allegiance to me. I would actually resent you if you did that. So this is for the why. Why do you want this as a lifter? This is the reason why. Keep in mind that the strongest lifters, the ones that go the furthest, have the strongest individualities every single time. But the only way to become one of them and to know how to protect yourself is to know yourself. And that is the step number one. To be able to find the key to a strong identity, you need to know what a key is to start with. And you have to take that to heart. Because many people think they know them themselves, but that's not the case. They know themselves at a surface level. And they don't realize that they have left large segments of their personality, of who they are inside, completely untouched for many reasons. Maybe because it scares them, they don't want to face it, because they're too lazy maybe, or because again, their identity has been replaced by another, and therefore they don't even think of looking because they think they already found it. Keep in mind that most of the time that's not the case. If you are a certain way because of someone else, it's not your identity, it's not your individuality, it's, uh, it's what we call in French un greffon. It's someone who just stuck an extra appendix on your body and for some reason it was never rejected. But it's because you never realized that it was a foreign entity to start with. So, this is why we're going to be thinking about that concept of the key. Keep in mind that a key both opens doors, but it also locks them. And I especially want you to become, ex uh, to become good and to become proficient at locking down doors. I know it's not popular in this world nowadays where you have to open up the doors, you have to break down the borders. All of that is bullshit and if you think about it, you will be able to actually know it. Because it takes strong defenses to have a happy life. It doesn't work to just be a hippie and accept everyone that is just nonsense and the more people live in a world that pretends to live by these tenets, the more we realize that it's nonsense. So, I want you to firmly grasp that key. But again, to be able to find that key that both opens and locks, you have first and foremost to find it. And to find it, you're going to have to spend time by yourself. This is going to be essential because learning who you are prevents yourself from being stolen. Again, it's almost impossible to resist the level of subjection and, and just subversion in general of the self that people are going to inflict on you if you don't even know what is being subverted in the first place. If you don't know who you are and there is a deviation in your identity, well, you won't even be able to notice because you don't even know what you are to start with. So this is step number one. The person on earth that knows you the best is you. It's very romantic to say that your partner they know you better than you know yourself. That is very cute and it's very flowery, but at the end of the day, it's bullshit. And if that's the case, you're in a very dangerous predicament. If your partner or anyone on earth knows you better for real than you know you, 
you need to work, right? It's not normal. You have every single key to every single door to your being. You should know yourself. I can tell you that even the person that I know and love the most and is the closest to me, they know me 60-70%. There are portions of me that I haven't discovered yet. There are portions of me that I make undiscoverable. And there are some of some portions that I don't even want the world to know. I keep to myself. This is not a bad thing. Again, being a little bit secretive and having things that you keep for yourself doesn't make you a hypocrite. It doesn't make you a liar. It just makes you a human. We all have our secret garden. It is incredibly uh, important that you cultivate that garden. And that garden is locked by what? A key. So, this is the time you're going to be spending alone. That time is going to be whatever you can do when you are away from people to develop the self, to think about yourself. Every single chance you get to just sit down and reflect and think back of an act of the past or a thought that you have or a certain feeling in your chest, take it. I want you to psychoanalyze yourself every single chance that you get because the more you do it, the more you become fluent in yourself. And that is the most important language you can learn how to speak. I'm sure you've heard it before. If you become your own best friend, you will never feel alone again. That is absolutely true. It doesn't mean that you won't seek the company of others. It just means that when you actually get that company, you will be much more comfortable and confident because you will be able to exist around them as a being that is fully aware. You want to understand and comprehend every single thing that goes through your head, that moves around your body. All of that is your universe, and it's an incredibly vast an incredibly ample and exciting universe to discover. So please do yourself that favor. But the only way to do that is to spend time alone. I've seen too many people throughout my life who are constantly seeking others because they were constantly trying to avoid having to do the work. They hated being by themselves because it's like staring into the void. It's like looking at the galaxy and realizing that you have to explore every single planet. But guess what? That's what life is. Most of self-improvement is that. It's not waking up at 4 a.m. It's not doing fucking coffee enemas. It's not going to drink a cup of greens and kale at 6 a.m. and then going for a jog in the rain. That is nice and all. It's going to toughen you up if it's something that you like doing. But the most important thing is the exploration of the self. The rest comes afterwards. The rest is secondary. The rest only helps when it comes to that very exploration. It would be the exact equivalent of just compiling and accumulating gear to go for a very long scuba dive in the abyss, but never actually doing the dive. All of that equipment and gear is now completely useless. Keep in mind one thing. You might develop and discover some portions of yourself when you are around others, but most of the time you'll find that you won't discover anything. You just confirm it. The things that you find out when you talk to others, when you confront your individuality to theirs, is something you already knew and now you can sign it off. You know for a fact that's who you are and it's now cemented. This is something to keep in mind. If you develop yourself around others 100% of the time, guess what? They now have ownership within your identity, right? They are part and they have have stocks in the company that is you. That is incredibly dangerous. It gives them the power to manipulate you the way you wouldn't even believe and to break you down because the people who know you the best can break you down the best. Now imagine if these people help build you. It's the reason why parents are so dangerous in a sense. They know you to a level that they can really fuck your identity up if they so decide because they had a hand in its construction. They could have planted TNT in the basement and blow it off at any random moment. So be very wary of that. Your construction is your own. Yes, it takes much longer to build the tower of the self when you're by yourself, when you don't have the hand of others to help, But keep in mind that it's always safer. And that is going to allow you also to then experience what it truly means to be around others. Because in truth, when you're around others, you project your identity. And you project it under a certain form. And that form is what we call a personality. Personality is your identity filtered through your mouth and through your body language that is then being presented to others. And we do that for one reason and one reason only. One, to be able to relate to others. Two, to put that identity to the test. You see that especially in teenagers. I don't know if you've realized, but especially teenage boys tend to go through phases. They tend to go through a certain cycle of personality they're going to espouse for two, three months, and then they're going to move on to another one. Why do they do that? 
they are looking for the personality that is going to be the most palatable to others and is going to be the most comfortable for them. It's something you see in kids as well. Take a, an eight-year-old to a movie with a kick-ass movie star or a badass role model. After the movie, the kid is going to act exactly like that movie star. Why? They're sifting through personalities. They're trying to find what they like best. But they also take a look at the way the world responds to that. It's the reason why you see trends. You see a group of people, millions of people, who are going to dress the same, talk the same, think the same way, and in a sense, be the same person. They are copying and just copy-pasting their personality after someone else. There's not really a problem with that. It it does become a problem, however, if you get stuck in that notion and you never realize that all of that should be part of the refining process. You try stuff out, you keep what you like, you ditch the rest. You build your own personality. And you do that again by constantly seeing if the group or the people are going to accept or reject that personality. Many people who have a personality that is rejected by the group try to change it around, they try to switch it around. That is a different discussion altogether. Sometimes it's going to lead to people who are social rejects and they're going to develop symptoms of social anxiousness, inability to actually exist within the group, and they're going to have a very tough time being productive members of society because of that. Or they're going to become incredibly headstrong, they're going to toughen themselves up to the point that they're going to have a personality that is going to be unbreak unbreakable. It's, a, it's a, a coin toss in a sense. It's a problem with bullying. Bullying either creates empty husks of human beings who are traumatized for life, or it creates the strongest, baddest motherfuckers you've ever met in your life. There's not really an in-between. Uh, it's a topic that if you're interested, I might actually uh, discuss later in a different video. But that is for the influence of the group. Keep in mind, you build yourself by yourself, being alone, and then you test that out with other people. Keeping in mind also that the feedback they give you should seek to, should, should serve to actually feed your ability to feel at home within yourself. You don't be, build an identity for others. However, you do want the identity to have the ability to help you connect with them. And we'll get to the reason why afterwards. The reason why it's so important to not skip that step is because I know many people who hear that and hear, oh, you have to be alone to build the self, and then they just turn into wild beasts and they never meet other people. The issue is that, again, we are social creatures. Your identity, yes, serves to protect yourself, but what is the point of protecting yourself if you're just going to lock yourself in to your house and never go out, right? The importance of having the ability to defend an identity takes into account the fact that you're going to put it at risk. You're going to, at some point, again, take the risk. It's like, if you're going to, you're going to, you know, uh, what is the term in English? You're, you're going to protect your car. Or you're going to have like a, a very strong, like double steel door. What is the point of that? Are you going to leave that car in the garage? No, you did that because you expect to be attacked. You expect to, be, to go outside. It's the exact same thing with your identity. It is very easy to maintain an identity when you're by yourself. But by that point, it has no meaning anymore, and also it has no value because it was never put to the test. It's the equivalent of a boat that never actually was put in the sea. It might look very good, but chances are if you're going to put it on the waves, it's going to sink immediately. So you have to go through the test. The true test of strength starts when you confront your individuality with others. That's when you're going to find out if you're made of the good stuff or if you're made of cardboard. And keep in mind also that even if you find out that you're made of cardboard and you're bitch made, it's just, it just means that it's a message that tells you that it's time to go back to the building board and it's time to, again, reconfigure. It's time to strengthen that individuality of yours that identity of yours, and then go back and try again and try again. It's how you refine the self. It's how you find yourself at some point or the other. I know many people who have very strong personalities when they're online or they don't have to face you. And then the second they're facing people, they melt down. Therefore, their identity was never strong in the first place. I say that because the internet has made it incredibly easy for people to fantasize their life, to live a dream identity of sorts that never actually materializes in real life. And that is just a waste. So you are going to have to enter social settings and it's going to put your identity at risk. But understand one thing. There are tools that exist to lock down and protect that identity. And today I'm going to focus on one and the most important one, in my opinion, the key that I wish to offer you is this time to lock down 
your identity and individuality, boundaries. Boundaries are the end or be all when it comes to protecting one's identity and therefore one's life. It is more effective than the strongest weapon you can carry on your body because at the end of the day, physical attacks will happen. Some people actually never get physically attacked their entire life as long as they live. But mental attacks happen on a daily basis. Every single person tries to break you down mentally. And unlike what you might think, because we live in a non-violent society, it only means that psychological attacks have doubled and tripled because they have to, people have to make up for the fact they can't punch you in the face anymore. So instead, they're trying to get to you with words, with actions, with slight manipulations that are going to fuck with your ego, fuck with your individuality, to try to rob you of it. So the way to protect the self is the boundary. The boundary is a wall set up to protect the identity. That is how I see it. Every single boundary that you set up serves the same purpose. At the end of the day, that's all it does. And you have to understand one thing. A boundary is only as strong as your commitment to it because it's not real. It's not a real wood. It's a mental protection, meaning that it can be unbreakable or it can be frail. It all depends on your mental strength. I can tell you one thing. I am the king of boundaries. If I set a boundary and I say a certain thing, that thing is not budging. And yes, it means you're going to have to be stubborn and people might think you're inflexible, but guess what? It don't matter. These walls have to be strong. When have you ever heard that a, wood, a, a, a wall being inflexible or a wall being stubborn was a bad thing? That's exactly what you expect of a wall. The only danger is if you surround yourself with so many walls that now you can't move anymore. That is different. That's why I already described for the people who don't realize that their identity is to be put to the test. But you want to make the test as difficult as possible for people who want to fuck with it for two reasons. One, if they try to actually harm you, they're going to hurt, them, hurt their head against a very strong wall and they'll give up. Or two, if they want to test you to see if you're worthy of becoming a friend, an ally, or a mate, they're going to realize that the wall is actually very sturdy and that they can count on you. That is very important. So let your walls be walls. Because keep in mind one thing. If the wall fails, you appear weak and there is nothing worse than that. Having your boundaries fall in the face of others, especially if they break it down themselves, is, is catastrophic because now they know they can do it again. Meaning that every single wall you're going to be putting up for the rest of your life with that person will be immediately, in a sense, suspicious. It's going to immediately lose some of its power because if they could knock down one, they can knock down two. It's the reason why you never want to lower your boundaries. Never allow people to walk all over your boundaries. I truly mean it. You need to take extreme decisions to protect them. And I'm, I'm not saying that so that you can go and punch people in the face. But I mean that there are certain scenarios where you're going to have to be faced within the situation of, do I protect my boundary or do I upset people? And when, I, when that comes to this, always, always protect your boundary. Fuck people's emotions. Your boundaries are more important because you are more important. Many people try to manipulate their way into making you feel bad because you refuse to actually bend the knee for them. These people are snakes. They're trying to see if they can weasel their way through the wall. They are trying to see if you're going to actually lower down the bridge for them. Don't do that because once the snake is inside the castle, it is 10 times tougher to actually kick it out. So keep these walls strong. Understand also one thing. When you allow the wall to fall, it also teaches you yourself as a person that you're weak. So you reinforce a cycle of destructive behavior because it means that the next time someone fucks, up, fucks your boundaries up, you're very likely to just let it happen because you did it once already. Never let that occur. Your boundaries are like a castle. Okay, They're built around one thing, your identity. And your identity is the army within the castle. And what does the, what does the army protect? <clears throat> the army protects your individuality. Your individuality is the treasure of the self. It's what allows you to be yourself. And I've already spoken about that in the video about individuality in the description, but understand one thing. What makes you worthy as a person, what makes you interesting, what makes you able to impact this world 
is your individuality. If you don't have that, you're just going to be a run-of-the-mill, useless, mediocre loser. And there's already billions of that guy. So don't be that guy. Be yourself and protect the self that you built. If you built it, it's for a reason. Keep in mind that the strongest countries, the strongest entities, the strongest movement of powers are built around a common culture. They are built around the belief that protecting that culture and protecting that identity, in a sense the group identity, is worth dying for. Because that's the case. It is worth dying for. Protect your identity with everything you have because it's what is protecting the individuality that is hiding inside. To continue with the metaphor of the castle, Understand that what people around you can see and get from you is what you project. And what you project is that, is this identity. Therefore, you want this identity to be as strong as physically possible. You want it to be, in a sense, as evidently resistant as possible. Why? Well, if you're facing someone who is potentially a danger and a threat, someone who wants to take advantage of you, you want them to see a strong castle. That way, they won't even attempt to take it over. Understand that there are people in this world who have a very strong ability to gouge your strength. And if they see that you're a potential victim, they will invade. For example, again with the metaphor, if they see a dilapidated castle, a castle with no protection, it is a clear sign that it is very easy for them then to invade it, to again destroy the walls, because the walls to start with are not very strong. And on the flip side, if you're meeting someone that you're interested in, someone that might themselves have a very strong identity, they will not respect you if they're not sensing that your identity can match theirs. If they see weakness, they're not going to want to actually associate with you because there is nothing to gain. If, however, your identity is very strong and what you project is very strong, now there is a chance. I want you to think of your personality, aka the projection of your identity to others, as an emissary. The emissary is the person that a castle, a kingdom, is going to send to other kingdoms to create relationships. In this case, the emissary is an expression of the kingdom. It carries with it the message that the king or whoever wants to actually share with the world. So if we were to actually transfer that onto social interactions, when you talk to other people, the way you actually carry yourself in these situations and the personality you project and what you allow others to do to your identity in these settings are information that people are going to use to decide whether they're going to associate with you or whether they're going to try to actively flee from you or even worse, if they're going to try and take advantage of you. If you want to attract the right people and shoo away the wrong people, the evil people who are going to try and break you down, then it is imperative that you have a strong identity and a strong personality. Strong kingdom, strong emissary, and therefore good relationships. You're going to attract the type of people that are going to strengthen you instead of stealing your resources. What happens if the emissary you send is very weak? Most likely, the kingdom in question will interpret that as weakness on your part, and therefore, there's going to be no relation. Worst case scenario, they might even just send their army, invade you, because you have shown that you are not ready to protect yourself. That is your personality. When you interact with others, understand that that is what's happening. It's sad, because we would like to believe that everyone is nice. But that's not how it works. Again, People who are willing to take advantage of you will judge you based off of your personality and the strength and weaknesses that you show. And those are generally benevolent that you want to associate with will do the exact same thing. So it's up to you to have very strong boundaries, very strong walls, and a very strong army. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're timid or shy or an introvert, you still have the ability to have strong boundaries. We all do. And that is what makes the difference at the end of the day between a strong and a weak identity. So if you're the type of person who wants to make friends, who generally wants to have a big social circle, who wants to be able to even protect the people that you love, understand that this is something you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to develop that strong identity and that ability to project it onto others, but also to protect that identity. And all of that, again, boils down to that. It's that personality. It's that emissary. How do you conduct yourself around others? What do you allow others to do to you? And how do you conduct yourself when people are not respecting the rules that you put in place? All of that is vital to understand. Keep in mind one thing. 
it is your house, it is your law, you own yourself, right? Again, this word is slowly trying to tell us that we don't really own ourselves and that the government might own ourselves or that some corporations might even get to decide what we do with our bodies. All of that is bullshit. They can only actually do that if you allow them. You were given a body and a soul that are yours to use until the day you die. So never ever let anyone take that away from you, especially that belief. As long as that belief remains strong, that it's your law and your body, you are going to be just fine. It is your choice. It is your call to make. And you will find that having that type of mindset will naturally filter people around you. Because you will have very strong walls, a very strong castle, a very strong army, and an individual the inside that is going to shine. A lot of people are going to see that and are going to want to steal it for you. The reason why is because it's very rare and it's also very precious. There are a certain kind of people in this world that are going to see it as a challenge to see if they can break you down. But keep in mind that the average person, even those with no sociopathic or psychopathic traits, are also going to be attracted because you are going to be a strong person and strong people are rare. And everything that is rare is precious. So these people are going to flock around you. And some of them are going to try and see if they can snuff that flame out just for the heck of it, for the challenge of it, or even just to see... Uh, if it's actually worth anything, they're going to try and see if it's worth the test. If you're a guy and you're trying to find a girl, you're going to find that many women are like this. They're going to push your buttons. They're going to try and see if you're willing to negotiate, if you're willing to actually compromise your individuality for them. All of that has nothing to do with their desires. They don't really care if you change or not. What they want to see is if they can get you to change. They want to see if they can get you to cut down your army by 50%, if you're going to actually lower down the bridge, if you're going to tear down the walls, all of that to see again if you are strong to start with or if it was just bullshit. Plot twist, if you actually allow your defenses to go down, that person is going to leave because you failed the test. It's something I already explained in the video when I discuss women and I discuss the way men should interact with them. Now, now that that is clear and that the metaphor of the castle, the army and the treasure is ingrained in your mind. <clears throat> Understand that, again, all of these defenses filter people around you. That is when you're going to go through that social setting stage of having your identity, have it attract people because it's going to be most likely attractive, and then go, go through a testing process. N not every single person that is going to be attracted towards you, that you're going to be attracted towards, is going to be a good fit. And that is when that key I gave you comes into play. The door is going to be locked. Many people are going to knock on that door, but not every single one of them deserves to be let inside. That is the natural filter I just described. You need to understand that, again, it is perfectly okay to reject some people and to protect yourself if you find that they're going to be a potential danger to it. Never be afraid of being alone. Keep in mind, you built that castle alone, meaning that it's also going to be fine to not allow everyone to enter that castle, and it means that you might spend more time with yourself. But at some point, you will find your people. Because there are dudes, again, that are going to see the castle and see the treasure inside and try to steal it. All of that they're doing is they're trying to break down your identity bit by bit to get whatever they want from you because it's going to make you subservient, it's going to make you easier to manipulate, you can become their literal slave in a sense, something that I've witnessed myself in people many times because at the end of the day what they did is they took your resources, they took who you are. It's a very primal instinct in a sense, it's just natural. You can't even be angry or upset at these people, they're just playing the game of life. You suck if you lose. If you didn't manage to protect yourself, it's your fault. Don't blame them. You were just not strong enough. But keep in mind that not everyone is like that. Some people are going to want to enter the, tre the, the castle to store the treasure, but some people will instead try to actually add to said treasure. And these are the people that you're going to want to keep around. Now, the filter is only as effective as your boundaries, all right? So if you have tiny walls like this and your army is like two guys with carrots in their hands, well, don't be surprised if every single person that comes by can come in. It's because your defense mechanism is extremely weak. And that means that there are a lot of people who are going to enter the castle and store your treasure. And again, as I said, in the process, they'll tear down your walls, they'll undermine your army. 
The manipulation process that some people are going to go through is very pernicious, but at the end of the day, the result is the same. They leave you broken down. They leave you without boundaries. That is the reason why also boundaries are so important. The more boundaries you have and the stronger they are, the more you prepare yourself to have stronger and more resilient boundaries in the future. Every time you break down your boundaries, you also create a cycle of destruction where it's very likely that the next boundary is going to be very weak as well. It's the reason why there are some people who've been victimized in their life, who've been traumatized in their life, and they become perpetual victims. They become non, they become endless targets for that type of people because predators have a very strong sense of smell. They can smell people with, with very weak identities and they always target them because it's always easier to, again, steal whatever they want from them. So, keep in mind, and that's, that again goes down to the, the topic of the individuality and strength that you cannot be happy in a dilapidated, dilapidated castle with no money and army. That's not possible. I know we have this glamorous view of rejecting riches and you can just live your life happily ever after. You don't really need to have a strong stance on anything. You can just be some just live and let live type of guy. That's nonsense at the end of the day. The weak is unhappy because weakness is not a state in which happiness can be reached. It's as simple as that. So you want to be as strong as possible in terms of identity because it's what's going to bring you happiness. And more importantly, it's what is going to bring others happiness. If you can't do it for yourself, which is already sad enough, it means that your sense of self is weak and damaged already, then do it for others. If you have people who love you, understand that if they're worth something, They'll want you to be very strong because your strength is going to protect them as well. If you have a strong castle, a strong army and plenty of treasures, guess what? It's going to allow you to help them as well. You're going to be able to expand that help to others. When they are in crisis or when they go through trauma, you're going to be able to open up your doors to them and welcome them in. And they'll know that they'll be protected. Your boundaries expand to others as well. Walls, and that's the reason why I said that, just walling yourself is a waste of time. Walls can also be put around the things that you love. At the end of the day, we protect our identity with it and our individuality, but you can protect loved ones. You can protect concepts. You can protect ideas. All of that boils down to it. You start building walls within the self for you, and then they expand. You can do it the other way around. There are too many people who think they're going to change the world and revolutionize everything, but they can't even defend their own self, meaning that they'll be completely useless. You want to be of use to others? Develop your identity. That is the best way. Now, <clears throat> once you do that, you'll find that people are going to be very attracted to you, that the ones that are actually just snakes are going to be pushed away, and the rest are actually going to come in and they're going to add to the treasure. They're going to reinforce your troops. That is when your identity is going to meet other strong identities, pure identities, and they're going to mix and intertwine. You will find that there are people like this in this world. Not everyone is going to try and pillage your castle. Some people are going to understand, and it still might be pointed out that they do that for their own benefits, that if they keep you as an ally, it's a much better choice than to actually pillage or ravage, ravage you because one, they can't do it because you're too strong. They've tested the walls and they've seen that the army is not there to, to tell jokes. And two, they understand that strength in number is a real thing. It's the reason why as humans, we are social creatures to start with. The more people you have in, the, in your social circle, circle, the less of a chance you have of being ostracized, the better chance of survival for you, your offsprings, etc., etc. And these are the people that will respect the walls and wait for the bridge, by the way. These are the people who will see the boundaries, understand their, understand their purpose, because they themselves are going to have strong boundaries and they're going to just respect them. They will back down and they will wait for you to lower the bridge. These people keep in your life. If you have people in your life that get upset when you stipulate your boundaries or who always try to negotiate with them, cut them down. They are either kids that don't understand the way the, the adult world works or they are the snakes I already described. Now, when you find these people, what you're wanting to try to do is you want to ally your identity to theirs. Now, I don't mean mix or intertwine. You still want to remain independent. What you want is a collective instead. A collective is not an amalgamation. It's an, unlike what many people will tell you nowadays, it's not a melting pot. If anything, it's a pot where every single ingredient has still maintained 
its own independence. Nothing is actually mixing. We are stronger when our identities are kept alive. Anyone who tells you otherwise is trying to reduce your identity into some sort of soup because they understand it's going to make you weaker and easier to manipulate. That is a toxic collective. There are many of those on the internet and in this life. You never want to be part of that. You want to build collectivism through strong individualities. Always insist on the fact that strength is the most important part of this equation. If strength is removed, then the collect collective cannot be strong. Any type of collective based off of weak identities is one of two things. One, it's ruled by a tyrant that most of the time remains dormant or remains hidden. He never reveals his true identity, but he is still the one ruling the entire thing. And at the end of the day, what you think is your identity is really his. He just injected it into you because it benefits his plan. Or it's dis destined to fail. A collective based off of weak individualities will be very easy to undermine. And most of the time, it is again doomed to extinction at, at one point or the other. And when that happens, you quickly find out also that it spells your doom as well because you decided to subscribe to that group and therefore your protection is gone though. Because you allowed someone else to provide you with the castle, the walls and the troops, but you never really owned them. Meaning that one day they can just turn their coats and disappear and now you're defenseless. But keep in mind one thing, it's even worse than that. Most likely, by giving up your treasure, your individuality, and allowing it to mix in that great bank with everyone else's identities and individualities, chances are it didn't really exist in the first place. You gave up your most important asset and therefore whatever protection was around it was just a sham. It was a mirage. You want to own every single aspect of your defense. You want to own the walls, the boundaries. You want to, to own the army, your identity that you decided for yourself and you want to own your individuality. All of these together are the key to a strong ability to again protect the self be useful to others and then expand. Then you can reach out to others. Then you can create kingdoms and dynasties. And this is how we evolve. This is how we create very strong systems that are, that are going to benefit, benefit everyone involved and reduce, again, the amount of parasitic manipulation to almost nothing. And if you manage to actually embrace that type of lifestyle, if you are willing to make the sacrifices, push away the snakes, build the castle and be the king in said castle, you are going to find that it's going to benefit your life and your lifting experience because at the end of the day, the foundation of everything is your identity and at the end of the day also, it is what needs to be preserved with the most vigor. And I'm going to leave you with that. I will be making more videos in that vein where I describe concepts of psychology or certain traits of the identity or of the self that need to be preserved or developed in males, in individuals in general to live a happy life. If you have any suggestions, let me know. I have certain ideas in my head already, but it will wait for next time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.